Okay, hey guys, Alodi here. Um, this time I'm going to be talking about naval gameplay, and I'm going to show you a really simple build that you can use on water-only planets. And you're probably asking why you would even bother learning this. Well, uh, water-only planets are actually really quite fun. It's very macro-orientated. Um, a lot of strategy and positioning involved. So it's quite a different kind of kettle of fish than your normal na uh, normal land planet. So what I'm going to do, we're going to start with a naval factory and go for the naval fabricators. We want to play very safe and standard, so we're going to go with two fabricators, then a narwhal, then a sunfish, and then three fabrication ships. Then we're going to go with the two metal with our commander, the air factory, pigeon, another air factory, and then four pigeons. Now the four pigeons should pop at the same time as the three fabrication ships on the tail end of our queue, so that should align quite nicely. Basically what we want to do is scout what our opponent is going to do, um, if he's going to go for a bomber snipe or spam air, then we have the hummingbirds to deal with that, and then we can add on more air factories um, from our fourth factory onwards. So we're going to get metal with our first fabricator, and then start scouting with a firefly for our opponent when our air factory pops. Um, second fabricator is going to go on metal as well, but we're not going to be getting energy with him. So we're going to send our Firefly out to scout for our opponents, um, just see what kind of build he's doing. If he's going to go with heavy air, then we also want to go with a lot of air factories to counter that. So like for example, if he's gone three air factories, we want to go with four air factories. And then if we produce hummingbirds non-stop, then we're safe, right? So we just want to play very safe, very standard, okay. Um, so our Nawal that's building right now, we're going to send that off to guard our uh, naval fabricator and that's just really to protect against any sunfishes that might be coming in to try and snipe our fabricators. At the same time we're going to send our own sunfish out and try and find our opponent's fabricators and snipe them. That's if he's gone naval fabricators anyway. Um, if he's gone air fabricators we want to shut that down with our hummingbirds. So it looks like we haven't been quite lucky yet, haven't found the opponent. Sometimes this happens. But I'm happy to go with naval factories at our fourth factory instead of an air factory because, well, we haven't seen any air presence from our enemy yet. He hasn't come and scattered us. Um, haven't seen any bombers nearby or anything trying to snipe our fabricators. So our third fabricator, we're going to go uh, pigeons. And then we're going to get another fabricator to build pigeons as well. So we want two fabricators on pigeons constantly throughout the game. That's just to pro um, so that's just to support our uh, naval factory production. Still haven't found the enemy, so we're going to scout a bit with hummingbirds as well. Since it doesn't seem like he's going to try and snipe us with uh, bombers or anything, so there's nothing really we need to protect against. So just queue those pigeons up. Okay, great. So we found him, and he's gone three naval fabs. So we're gonna reroute everything down: our firefly and our sunfish, and we're gonna scout him with one hummingbird. Okay, so it's gone two air factories and three naval, so that's the same as us, except our air factory is a bit quicker. So we know that we have air control right now. There's nothing to worry about on that front, so we can focus on the naval factories. Um, we're going to start uh, scouting a bit for any ninja air fabricators. This is really important that you do this every single game, because if you don't catch a ninja air fabricator, they can put up like 10, 20 mechs and you wouldn't know about it. So that's really, really important for you to keep um, scouting the map continuously throughout the game. Here we're going to just camp his air factories a bit, just try and pick off anything that comes off. And uh, yeah, uh, we need to guard our fabricators as well, just in case he's sending sunfish around to try and kill them.
Okay, so we're gonna scout, try and scout for his naval fabricators and bring in our sunfish. Well, that didn't go to plan. <laughs> See if we can find them. Okay, so there they are. We are going to reroute our sunfish around and try and take out those fabricators. Uh, it's really important to keep your f um, your sunfish alive uh, because in the late game your opponent might start getting a bit greedy or start making mistakes and sending off uh, fabricators unguarded and that's when you can pick them off. So we want to keep it alive and try and be as annoying as possible with it. Of course we're going to scout for our sunfish with uh, air units because the vision range on the sunfish is not that great to be honest. Uh, we're going to start pumping out some destroyers because we know our opponent isn't going for heavy air and we have that air control. Get a forward radar up. Um, and so radar is actually really quite important in naval gameplay, much more so than land because... Oh god, oh god. So that was unfortunate and uh, took out our sunfish. Um, I believe the commander torpedo is being nerfed in the PTE, so the range is being reduced and so is the rate of fire, which I think is a good move. So those kind of things won't be happening as much. Um, so the commander is here, we want to avoid it and we want to attack from that direction instead. So we're going to route all of our ships around his base. And then we're going to start getting some proxy stuff up. And uh, I think we will start going with some destroyers because he, like, we have air control, right? There's nothing he can do. You can't just bomb a snipe because for every bomber that you produce, your opponent can produce one hummingbird in response. So if you're scattered, then it's GG really. It's not going to work. Um, so we're going to build another naval fabricator. So keep watching your energy up the top. Uh, if you see that you have surplus energy, just get another naval fabricator to fill that up. We want to try and float as little energy as possible. So we'll get another proxy on this side. So basically proxy bases on both sides and that's going to force him to have to respond to three directions. What that means is um, if he tries and takes out one of our proxies on the side, we can come in with our main force down the center and take out his flank. Because how naval works is the, um, the turret speed on ships is actually quite slow. So flanking is actually really, really effective. Looks like we're low on metal, so I'm going to go and get that with our fabricators and then we're going to route around his commander again with our ships. And so at this point it's pretty much over, um, well I think it's over because our opponent hasn't macroed up at, at all, he's just tried to turtle with, um, with anti-air turrets because he thinks we're going to snipe him with air or something. That's another reason why I wanted to make this video, um, just to push the meta along because I know everyone's just bomber sniping each other and it's it's really really stale. It really is. Um, it's not even the best strategy. It's just lazy because I mean there's just so much more that naval offers. Uh, in terms of T uh, two, that's something you can also get because uh, if you think about how slow naval ships are, like even if your opponent has 10 more factories than you, it's going to take time for that production to reach your base, right? So you have time to get your T2. Um, it's just that my personal pre uh, my personal playstyle is to use uh, T1 proxy factories, so I don't generally tend to go for the T2. But I'm not saying that it's not viable. So our fighters have done their job, we're just going to send them in and kill off any bombers that he might have because that's the only way he can win right now is to bomber snipe us. Uh, 
Um, you might be asking why we don't just bomber snipe him in return, and that's well because it's it's not as safe. Because like, what happens if we try and bomber snipe him and he tries to bomber snipe us at the same time? There's a risk that he might actually win. Whereas if we just try and finish him off with ships, that kind of guarantees our victory. It's just a good habit to get into to play safely. Um, try not to take any unnecessary risks. So it looks like this game might be over and I might speed this up in editing if nothing else happens. Uh, just to recap, what we did was we started with a very standard build order uh, which could have transitioned into anything depending on what we scouted from our opponent. Um, and that was the, the one naval factory and the two air factories. Uh, we scattered him, we saw what he was going to do and responded with the correct factory in return. So this time it was the naval factories. Then we played the macro game, so we tried to harass his metal and his fabricators while protecting our own and building more ships than him. Then we transitioned into proxy bases as our energy allowed in order to uh, split his forces. We built some forward radars and then we started putting on the pressure with our superior macro. And then when we found ourselves in a winning position, we tried to protect ourselves from the bomber snipe, which would have been the only way our opponent could have won at that point. And just tried to close out the game with uh, ships in a no-nonsense kind of way. We didn't try and go for our own bomber snipe, which would have meant we would have given up hummingbird protection and left ourselves open to any kind of bomber snipe of our opponent. Um, if you haven't played uh, water only maps before, I would highly recommend that you at least give them a shot once. Like I know a lot of people, they give a frown of disgust at the very mention of naval, but you know, you might be pleasantly surprised, because I know I was when I started playing it. There's a lot more emphasis on macro, on information, on scouting, and on making the right choices. And also the pacing is a lot slower, so if you're struggling to keep up with the tank and docks macro in uh, the land-based uh, gameplay, then you might find naval a bit easier for you to keep up with. Uh, so yeah, I think I might speed this up right now. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope you guys give naval a shot.